Let's review the journal entries for merchandising operations. So we have a list of transactions here for Wilson Company when they're both the buyer and the seller. So let's start on August 1st. It says that Wilson Company purchases $2,000 of inventory from Davis Company, terms 210 net 30 FOB shipping point. So let's talk about what those terms mean. So that means that this purchase was made on account and Wilson Company could get two, a 2% 2 discount if they pay back within 10 days, or they have to pay the net, they have to pay all of it within 30 days. And then FOB shipping point, that means that the buyer has to pay for the shipping costs. So on August 1st, Wilson Company purchases this inventory. How are we going to journalize that? Well, their inventory is increasing. So we want to debit inventory. And then how did they pay for this inventory? It was on account. So we will credit accounts payable. And for how much? That's our $2,000. Now, a few days later on August 3rd, Wilson Company pays the $100 for shipping. Now, whenever the buyer pays for shipping, they count that under inventory because it was just an additional cost of getting this inventory. So we will debit our inventory and credit cash because it says that Wilson Company pays the $100. And we put the $100 into our journal entry. Now, on August 4th, Wilson Company returns $200 of inventory to Davis Company. So if you return inventory, you no longer owe as much money, right? So we need to debit our accounts payable to decrease that liability. And we need to credit inventory because we also now have less inventory in our warehouse. So we will debit and credit $200. Now, August 7th rolls around and Wilson Company becomes the seller, right? It says Wilson Company sells $5,000 of goods to Moore Company, terms 210 net 30, FOB destination, the goods cost $3,000. So whenever you're the seller and you make a sale, you have two different entries that you need to make. First will be to record the sale itself, record the amount of money that you charged your customer. And then the second entry is to record what those goods that you sold, how much did they cost you? So we will first record what we sold these goods for to our customer, right? So it says that we sold $5,000 of goods and it was on account because we have these terms. So we will debit accounts receivable because we will be getting that money in the future and we will credit sales revenue to show that we made a sale for five thousand dollars now our second entry is to record the cost of these goods so that's where we look at the three thousand that we are given in the transaction so we will debit our cost of goods sold, which is an expense, and we credit inventory for $3,000. So we have those entries now in the uh, lower right-hand corner, and we'll continue here on August 8th. So on the 8th, it says that Wilson Company pays $50 of freight costs. So back when they made that sale on the 7th, we had FOB destination. FOB destination means that the seller has to pay for shipping or for freight. It's the same thing, right? So here they're paying $50 of freight costs. And whenever the seller pays for the shipping, they will debit freight out and then here we're going to credit cash because it tells us that we are paying that cost right now of 
Now, on August 10th, payment of amount due less the discount to Davis Company. So, they are paying back Davis Company the amount that they owed them. So, Davis Company, that's the company that we purchased inventory from back on the first, right? So, let's first just work on the accounts themselves and then we'll talk about the numbers. So, we will have to debit accounts payable because we are paying back Davis Company, so we don't owe them that money anymore. We're going to credit inventory, and this inventory here, this is going to be the discount, right? We paid them back within 10 days, so we get that 2% discount. And that discount, when you're the buyer, falls under inventory. Then we also need to credit cash because we are making a payment to Davis Company. So accounts payable will debit for eighteen hundred. And where do we get this eighteen hundred? Well, this is where making a T account for accounts payable might come in handy. Back on August first, you can see that we credited accounts payable for two thousand dollars. Then we debited accounts payable on the fourth. 200. So its balance at that point would be $1,800. So we are making a payment to get all of that $1,800 off of our books. But we don't have to pay Davis Company all $1,800 because we get a 2% discount. So we need to figure out what 2% of 1800 is. So we take 1800 times 0.02 and we get $36. So we're getting a $36 discount here on the 10th. So if we owed $1,800, got a $36 discount, we subtract those two, and we see that we had to pay $1,764 in cash. So now on August 11th, more company returns $500 of damaged goods, and the goods have a fair value of $75. So more company is the company that we sold goods to back on August 7th, right? So some of those goods that we sold them were damaged, and they're sending them back to us. So just like when we made the sale, we had two entries. When we have to take on this return, we have two entries as well. The first is to record this 500 amount. So we're going to debit sales returns and allowances, which is a contra revenue account. And then we credit accounts receivable. Because if they are returning goods to us, they don't owe us that money anymore. And that's where the $500 gets recorded. Now, we also need to record this fair value. Right? These goods are damaged, but we might be able to you know, sell them for scrap metal, let's say. So they have a fair value of $75. So we will debit our inventory to show that we're getting that inventory back and credit our cost of goods sold to decrease our cost of goods sold for the amount of the fair value. Now, on August 15th, we received payment from more company less the discount, right? So they had to pay back within 10 days. They did, so they get a 2% discount here. Once again, let's just focus on the accounts. So we are receiving payment, so that means that we are going to be getting cash. So we wanna debit our cash here. We're gonna debit sales discount as well. So when you're the seller, that 2% discount, 3% discount, that will be recorded under sales discount. And then we want to credit accounts receivable because if more company is paying us money, we need to show that they don't owe us that money going forward. So first we need to figure out our accounts receivable number and we have 4,500. And how did we get that? Well, 
just like we did earlier with our accounts payable. We can make a T account. Back on August 7th, we debited accounts receivable for 5000 but then on the 11th, we credited accounts receivable for 500, which leaves this balance now of 4,500. So that's how we get that 4,500 amount for our accounts receivable. Then we can figure out the amount for sales discount. The terms were 210 net 30, meaning they get a 2% discount since they paid back within 10 days. So we take 2% of 4,500. So 4,500 times 0.02 gives you 90. So we're giving them a $90 discount here on August 15th. And then we take the 4,500 minus 90, and we see that the amount of cash that we received was 4,410. 